everyone. I'm Dr. Sujata Nalapredi with uh, Rocky Mountain Cancer Centers. And I'm here with my partner, Dr. Patrick Ulit. We are going to have a discussion today about some of the hottest issues in colorectal cancers, including updated screening guidelines, genetic testing, and advances in the treatment options. Dr. Ulit, let's go ahead and get started. Can you review the screening guidelines for colorectal cancers, including the recent changes at this time? Sure, thank you, Dr. Nalapretti. So we've had some changes regarding colorectal cancer screening for patients, including a recent guideline update to change the starting age for screening from age 50 down to age 45. This is due to an increased incidence of younger patients developing colorectal cancer. The change was first instituted in 2018 and other screening guidelines have followed suit. So now patients for average risk of colon cancer should consider starting colon cancer screening at age 45. Patients do have a lot of options. The tried and true gold standard is a screening colonoscopy. This is performed to detect and remove polyps within the colon, and in general can be performed once every 10 years, provided no polyps are seen. Other opportunities for patients not wishing to undergo a colonoscopy can be a stool test. There are two different opportunities, one to check for blood in the stool called a fecal occult blood test, and another one is a DNA-based assay looking at your stool to see if there's any concerning red flags that would indicate a higher risk for colon cancer. The disadvantage to the stool testing is an abnormal test will still prompt you to undergo a screening colonoscopy. So in general, we do recommend a screening colonoscopy for patients at average risk starting at age 45. Yeah. So we are seeing more increased incidence of young colorectal cancers, right, Dr. Elliot? So what yeah. do you think could be the cause and what can patients do to decrease the risk for colon cancer? So there are a lot of hypotheses as to what's driving the younger patients developing colon cancer, including our diet, smoking, obesity, and the increased use of processed foods. And we think that the combination of those factors has contributed to changes within the gut microbiome, making younger patients more susceptible to colon cancer. Yeah, I do see that. And I think that's the importance of screening early and not ignoring the symptoms if young patients who usually tend to ignore the symptoms and delay testing. So thank you very much. But also coming to the guidelines like genetic screening and guidelines, they're always we have family members asking if they should get tested for any syndromes or colon cancers. So what are the guidelines for genetic screening for colorectal cancers? That's a great question. So the most common hereditary syndrome that will make patients at risk for colon cancer is called Lynch syndrome. And this is a genetic abnormality that can place you at increased risk for colon cancer, other GI cancers as well. And so the criteria for this syndrome includes three relatives having a Lynch syndrome associated cancer spanning two different generations one patient diagnosed before the age of 50, and one first degree relative. So that's why a good family history is important to identify patients that may be at higher risk and may benefit from genetic screening. How uh, do you guys do testing at, like we do testing at the Rocky Mountain Cancer Centers, right? I tend to do screening for our patients. Can you tell our patients how we do the testing and how, how do we help these patients and family members? Of course. So usually patients will come to us with a history of cancer, and that's how we identify genetic mutations. If we find one in, in one of our patients, other family members may be afflicted by the same genetic mutation. So that may prompt us to bring those family members into our clinic and, and screen them as well. We have a platform to allow us to screen family members and also counsel family members that may be at risk for these genetic mutations. And so if we find these, that may have treatment implications as well for patients with colon cancer. Dr. Nalapretti, can you talk to me a little bit about what those implications may be for patients? Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, Patrick. So the good thing about this genetic testing is it opens up treatment options for patients with colorectal cancer who have Lynch syndrome. So we recently got approval for immunotherapy, which is newer treatment option for our patients with relatively different mechanism of action and better outcomes in terms of improvement in overall survival and response in patients who get immunotherapy for advanced colon cancer. Answer. In fact, we even see some patients even get complete responses with the use of immunotherapy, which is a new treatment options for patients with Lynch syndrome at this time. Can you talk to me more about other targeted therapies for patients with colon cancer? Yeah. So for colon cancer, we definitely have improved treatment options compared to like in 2010, when we had only six drugs, which were we were used to treat advanced colon cancer. We have 13 drugs now, including targeted therapies and immunotherapies. These targeted therapies are specific for patients who have certain targets, which are upregulated or downregulated in their cancers. So it's more like personalized treatment based, which we tend to offer patients based on these targets that they can have personalized treatment options for these patients. We have a lot of genes which we test on patients' tumors called KRAS, BRAF, HER2 genes. All these help us better target the treatment options and personalized treatment for the patients at this time. And you and I are fortunate to practice at Rocky Mountain Cancer Centers, where we have a variety of clinical trials for patients to consider enrolling in and seeking treatment through the clinical trials. Can you talk to me a little bit about the benefits of these trials for our patients? Yeah. So at this time, I think the treatment options, which I said before, from six drugs to 13 drugs, which are approved at this time, is all with the help of clinical trials, like with patients enrolling more and more in clinical trials that we are going with we are able to provide more better treatment options for our patients at this time. So patients have this wrong notion that clinical trials, they are more like guinea pigs and not getting standard of treatment. And that's the wrong notion. I think everybody in clinical trial, most of them do get standard of treatment options. And in addition, they get newer therapies, which are leading to approval of the new treatment options. And at RMCC, we are big in clinical trials. We have trials for all stages of our patients, and we encourage patients to participate in clinical trials. And that's what leads us to get the newer treatment options for our patients. And we have been big enroller of clinical trials, let it for immunotherapy treatment options, where we were a big part in enrolling patients or targeted therapy options. And, and we really thank our patients to be participating in these clinical trials and letting us get these newer treatment options for our patients. Absolutely. Well, I think that's all we have time for today, but Dr. Nella Peretti, thank you for joining me today for this quick update on the advances in colon cancer detection, diagnosis, and treatment. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. And it was good catching up. And I hope we can do more of these in future for our patients. Absolutely.